Alright, so just about this post-workout meal, guys. Editing the video. About 10.30. Add some rice, chicken, beans, fat-free cheese, and some salsa. Ran out of that fat-free sour cream, so stayed away from it. And that's how I'm gonna finish off the macros for tonight. Today, rep that fat dude shirt. Of course, I got so sweaty in it, dried up a little bit. So I still got a shower. Stairmaster, if you want a cardio workout, hit that. But let's get right into this video, guys. So today, guys, was a back and by workout. Very hypertrophy based. A lot of volume, a lot of reps, a lot of sets. As per usual, as I've been doing. Um, and I think it's been working. So today you guys saw me weigh in at 202.2. The reason I attribute the 0.6 pound weight gain, this is A, I don't think my energy expenditure yesterday was too high. I did the one hit cardio. I didn't do any stair masters in my, ch in my uh, chest workout. Didn't really burn a lot of calories. I mean, I felt a good burn, but not a lot of calories were burned, I don't think. I just didn't feel. Like today, I felt like I burned a ton of calories. So I did the hit cardio, and I did Stairmaster, and I did a back and bio workout. Then I started off with deadlifts. So, you guys know I'm a big advocate of progressive overload. And most people think that progressive overload is just, oh, hit a five by five at this weight, go up five pounds. Five by five at that weight, another five pounds. Yeah, that is a way of progressive overloading. That is hitting a weight, and then increasing it as you're mastering the previous weight, which will in turn create size, will make you stronger. But let's say you've gotten rid of those beginner gains, like you've gone past that point of your lifting. What's next? You're kind of stuck at a plateau, it's taking you weeks to get five pound increments up. Then progressive overload can take place in many different ways. You hit, so you have the weight increase, you can then have speed increase, which is what I've been doing with deadlifts, because I know that my deadlift game has been very, very weak as of late. Um, my lower back has been stopping me from going super, super heavy. So what I'm doing is I'm doing speed reps. I'm going as fast as I can. I'm exploding off the ground. You guys see me, I'm going off the ground, I'm swaying my hips all the way through. And I worked up to 275, hit a set of like eight, I think. I recorded the 225 with that hit for a set of 10. So that is another way of progressive overloading increasing speed of the lift. Maybe you're not going, maybe you're not making incremental gains in terms of weight, but you're making incremental gains in terms of how quickly you're doing the weight and how many reps you're getting. Maybe the first week you only hit eight, this week you hit nine, and those nine reps were faster than the eight reps that you were doing before. And your rest periods were slower. So after the deadlift, we moved on to, I went back to pull-ups, or yeah, pull-ups for me. My boy Jackson over here did some chin-ups. Uh, he was nice enough to help record a couple clips, which really helped out. So we're kind of walking through, because he was also doing a back by day, but he was doing it on his own. And I was giving him tips and pointers, which you guys will see. But I hit pull-ups, which I think is the greatest thing in terms of growing your back and adding muscle to your back and growing that size, those lats. That's what you want, you want that V, that tapered V, pull-ups. Yeah, you can do lat pull-downs, but nothing beats pull-ups, especially because it's your own body weight and you have to control your whole body. So after that, I did five sets of eight on pull-ups. Didn't go any anything crazy. I stopped at eight, even though like the first set I probably could have gotten nine or ten. Saved it for for the end of the workout. I wanted to be able to get a lot of. I wasn't trying to be gassed throughout the workout and be unmotivated. The way to do that is to leave a little bit in the tank. So then I did the close grip or V grip lat pull downs, which if you have not done it, get on it. I like it a lot better than the regular lat pull down grip because it attacks your lats and it lets you squeeze the lats. Like your, um, so let's say you put your hand back there or a phone or anything back there, it allows you to really squeeze it a lot more than if you would have your arms all the way out. Then we go on to this row machine. What is very, very important is to have your scapula retracted. So what that means is, how I like to do it is like, okay, so here I'm sitting down, my posture is kind of eh, right? Scapula retracted is you bring your shoulders back and you kind of just let, and then you just like sit. Bring your sh shoulders up and then sit down like this and then that engages your lats. So like even this movement right here, I'm feeling it in my lats and I'm not even pulling anything. So that isolates it totally. If you're just here and you're doing this, you're not getting anything out of it. So you wanna sit up straight, scapula retracted with any movement, either you're up here, rowing it from here, rowing it from down here. You wanna be straight postured, scapula retracted, shoulders back and locked in and ready to go. Cause if not, like I said, if you're slouched over, just going through the motions, it's not gonna work. You will not be able to get a full isolation of your lat, or lats in this case. 
After that, I moved on to my cable pullovers, which I really, really like. Usually I'll start with it, but today I kind of put, made it as a working movement. I usually have it as a, so I usually have it as a warm up. And I had my, my boy Jackson try it out. He's never done it. I think that the pullover is a movement that you need to be able to master, like in terms of, you need to know how to engage your lats because it can very easily be done and you don't feel it all. You feel it in your biceps and your triceps. Like you see Jackson, he's kind of, uh, bending his elbows a little bit. The way to do it correctly is you want to lock your elbows into one place. Not lock them out, like bend a little bit, but lock them into place. You don't want to be doing this because that's just the tricep push down. So you want to be able to do that and then squeeze at the bottom. Again, with your scapula retracted, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And really focus on what you're doing. Um, and then did my last superset was a single arm cable row, which I really, really love because especially I hit it with a low at a low angle to hit like the lower lat. So all the way down here, which really, really feels a burn. Like I know I'm gonna feel it tomorrow. Hit it with both arms, obviously. And then I went on to do spider curls, single arm spider curls with my boy Jackson. My arms are looking tiny, which I don't really like, but you gotta get more volume in the biceps. Like I've worked up to 25. And the reason I like spider curls is because it really, really isolates the bicep. And not only that, I like single arm movements because you can spot yourself. You guys saw me spot myself with the right hand to get that extra rep in. I don't need somebody to kind of save me. I mean, it was nice that I did have somebody if I really wanted to, but with single arm movements, you can spot yourself. That's why I try some kickbacks, like doing one arm. I like to do some iso isolation movements with the bicep, and this helps out a lot. So, that's gonna do it for the voiceover. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. So, guys, I'm about to bring this video to an end. I'm liking these style of workouts or uh, videos a little bit better. They're shorter, they're to the point, um, they're teaching you guys a few things. And I just want to bring you guys information that you can use and apply it into the gym. You can try it once. If you like it, awesome. If you don't, it doesn't hurt to try. So that's going to be this video. A great pull workout. Had fun doing it. My motivation is through the roof. Um, don't forget, the website is live. I'm taking clients still. Um, I think I got about seven clients right now, which is very, very cool. I'm creating personalized workouts. Like I said, the link is in the description, so don't forget to click on it and just check out the website because I know how many people go through and just view it, which to me is enough. And then for the shirts, I'm gonna put the placement, the, I'm gonna put the order in very, very soon to get a bulk order. I think I'm gonna get either 100 or 200 shirts, depending on demand. Obviously, the more I get, the cheaper it is per shirt. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to hit that like button for me. It really helps grow the channel and helps push us to the next level. Like, share, subscribe. Until next time guys, stay fat.